In smart money concepts, the order block is the most misunderstood concept of them all. One up candle does not mean it is a bearish order block. One down candle does not mean it is automatically a bullish order block. So what actually is an order block? And of course, to represent our core value of the money making team, we are here to make money. So we focus on how we can use order blocks to guide us in actually making money. Now, without further ado, let's dive straight into it. We see order blocks by REO EO MMT. Now, moving on to section one, in order for us to find the strongest order blocks that actually will guide us to making profits, we need to understand where order blocks form. Because like we mentioned, not every up candle or down candle is an order block, right? It's very important. Order blocks form in specific areas. Where the first area is a reversal area. The second area is order blocks form after manipulation gaps. The third one is order blocks also form in close proximity and after mitigated gaps. The gaps we went over in the previous video, the strongest fair value gaps. If you haven't watched that just yet, don't worry. First, go over this video and then you can go over the previous episode, episode five. So also what we are seeing on the right side of our screen, we have the red line that is the reversal area. The gap higher, the fair value gap higher right there is the manipulation gap. Afterwards, once we come into that, we create a sharp turn. When we create the sharp turn, we have an up candle coming into that fair value gap right there. That continues lower. That up candle right there becomes the order block. This is exactly where most order blocks will form as well. Now, before we dive into the chart on where order blocks form, I want to combine this section with section two because which order blocks are the strongest ones? What creates a valid order block as well? First thing we need to understand, and what we see right there is FEG, fair value gap. Fair value gaps are the superior PD rate. What does this mean? Without a fair value gap, nothing is valid, meaning there is no order block if there is no fair value gap. So in your notes, it's very important to understand if there is no fair value gap, then there is no order block. Very important. Next step is order blocks need to come off of a previous PD array. So if we're looking at a bullish order block, for example, the one we see on the right right there, then this is coming off of that fair value gap right there. After that, we create a fair value gap. That is a valid order block. Again, which PD arrays do we actually use? Mitigation block, breaker block, order block, fair value gap, swing high, swing low, or previous candle low, previous candle high. Very important. Then after the previous PD array, we see context because that relates to where the order block actually forms. That's very important. It always needs to be in some kind of context. Then the last one is the recent lag right there. We are always looking at order blocks in the most recent lag. They are the strongest ones. Now, of course, I can understand that the steps right here are a little bit vague. So to take away all the confusion, let's dive into the chart. All right, here we are on US dollar, Canadian dollar. Again, these order blocks work on every single market. They are present in every single market. So it's not limited to only Forex. Now, on this US dollar, Canadian dollar chart, and on the weekly time frame, we see the following thing. We see that overall, we have been quite bearish right there. We had some bearish candles. After those bearish candles being created, we had a few fair value gaps as well, left behind sitting right there, for example. After that, we trade back into this up candle right there. This up candle is what we know as an order block. That is a bearish order block. So that singular up candle is a bearish order block. So if we go over section two first right here, why is this an order block? It leaves behind a fair value gap right there. It leaves behind even two fair value gaps. That makes it a valid order block. That is the first step to understanding that it is a valid order block. Second of all, it is coming off of a breaker block. Meaning the second step, previous PD ray. The previous PD ray right here is this breaker block sitting right there. 
the break block is something we will go over in next videos as well so don't worry something we will go over but just understand that is a pd array that is a premium array that we can head lower from and that is where the order block the up candle traded back into to then continue lower off of so the fair value gap the previous pd array are both ticked off then we need context the context indicates overall that we need to always be aligned with the context meaning we had our bias right the bias was the direction was the draw on liquidity we've been going lower right there so the weekly could actually continue lower towards one of these next discount arrays sitting right there first one the previous week low then we have this right there in the form of that fair value gap that is the first step of context so it's in alignment with our overall bias the next step is is that this bearish order block right there there should be on the time frame above it no fair value gap right there which if we take a look at the monthly is there a fair value gap above that weekly order block no there is not so that creates a valid bearish order block on the weekly time frame that context is something we'll go over more in depth as well in the next example then the last step is the recent lag. Is it located in the most recent lag on that particular time frame? Yes, because this right here, this swing high towards that swing low is the most recent lag. The most recent lag is just very simply said, the most recent swing high to the most recent swing low. If you have a bearish lag and if it's a bullish lag, it's the most recent swing low to the most recent swing high. The reason why we go over that most recent lag is purely to avoid us from trading from random order blocks all the way to the left. There could be order blocks that are two years old, something like that. So what we are seeing here is that this up candle right there is our order block. Now, how do we actually go about marking this order block? If the fair value gap to the right side is directly overlapping with the order block wick, meaning this little wick right there the absolute lowest point of that wick if that is directly overlapping with a fair value gap right there then that is what you would mark meaning you would mark out the wick right there instead of the body because the wick is directly overlapping with the fair value gap then the whole up move right there the whole up candle is the whole order block that is your bearish order block right there now on the weekly time frame we can understand that we are likely going to get a rejection off of that weekly or block doesn't have to push all the way lower towards new all-time lows no as long as we get a simple rejection off of it that is already enough to make money from it and that is the beauty of it where a lot of people think oh it should follow through all the way lower yes that is of course ideal that is very nice but you only need a small rejection on the weekly or monthly time frame to actually go into the lower time frame to trade that rejection and when you trade that rejection the rejection on the weekly might not seem like a lot but on the lower time frame it's so much that you can easily capitalize on it so this weekly order block can push lower towards for example the previous week lows that we have sitting right there and the weekly fair value gap right there it can at least give a rejection so if we then go into the one hour time frame on the one hour time frame we now see this line is the weekly order block right there so once we have a reversal area which in itself can also be something like a fair value gap right on the weekly time frame in this case it was a weekly order block doesn't have to be a weekly order block so the reversal area here is that pd rate that we can head lower from that is exactly an area where we are also expecting order blocks to be created now after we have the first reversal area we also see manipulation gaps in the form of these right here and also mitigated gaps after manipulation gaps and after mitigated gaps we will form order blocks as well those manipulation gaps and mitigated gaps simply again tell us that we are reversing and when we are reversing we will create order blocks which overall leaves behind this bigger sharp turn right there off of that sharp turn what are we actually doing we come back into a breaker 
with fair value sitting right there as well we create these two up candles sitting right there and once we create those two up candles and we continue lower we create fair value gaps continuing lower as well meaning that we had a move into a previous premium array in the form of those breakers right there we have created fair value gaps at least one fair value gap lower we are in context because we are coming off that weekly order block and we are expecting at least a rejection this order block right there is also in context because there is no fair value gap above this order block high right there on the time frame below it if there was a fair value gap in this area then this would not have been a valid or high probability order block right there then after we also see that it is located in the most recent lag to be specific this right there is the most recent lag with a fair value gap in it as well so we can even refine it a little bit towards this right there and now how do we mark out this order block if there is multiple consecutive up candles or multiple consecutive down candles and that's the last consecutive up candles before we make the move lower or the last consecutive down candles before we make the move higher those are the ones you want to mark out because that the whole up move right there is your order block meaning that we now have marked out two up candles because those two consecutive up candles is what creates one big order block and you can also see that we have marked out the body and not the wick why because the wick right there the bottom of that wick is not overlapping with a fair value gap directly yes all the way to the right but there are wicks in the way right there so it's not directly in line with a fair value gap towards the right side which means that we will mark out the body instead of the wick why actually is that that is because if the wick isn't overlapping with a fair value gap that is not the sensitive area the sensitive area then is the body instead of the wick because the wick simply already has been traded back into which automatically means that this right there becomes your order block and that goes hand in hand with it being a fair value area so your order block is what we went over in episode one your fair value area which means that right there we have one two three right there that creates your fair value area and we are refining we are getting a little bit more specific on where we can actually continue lower from because this right there is the order block and that is your fair value area where you're expecting lower prices from and inside this bigger order block we have multiple other order blocks as well because we see multiple up candles right we also have this up candle before the move lower and we also have this up candle sitting right there before the actual move lower you can use those order blocks as your refined area meaning again that you're getting more specific on where it can actually continue lower from but you need to understand that the overall order block is this big one right there so it's important to understand that this order block should not be violated should not be traded back above inside that bigger order block you will have nested order blocks nested order blocks are smaller order blocks inside a bigger order block which again just adds as a refinement and adds another confluence that we actually want to continue lower adds an extra argument to the bearish overall argument as well so let's leave the refined order block on our chart right there after we come into that refined order block we see this order block being created right there this order block the same exact thing we have a previous pd array right there which is also a reversal area right it's very important to note that the reversal area does not necessarily have to be on the same time frame but the previous pd array in section two always needs to be a previous pd array off of the same exact time frame otherwise simply said it is not valid because then you can always find a pd array on the lower time frame to make the argument that is coming off of a previous pd array of course now after we also see that we are leaving behind a fair value gap 
it is in context it is also the most recent lag which we're seeing right there so this right now how do we mark it that right there is our highest probability and our strongest order block which we can continue lower from now of course all this is fractal meaning if we now go into the five minute time frame inside this order block right there on the one hour then on the five minute time frame what do we find more order blocks what do we see right here on the five minute time frame we have this first fair value gap right there the first sharp turn actually once we create the sharp turn we sting back into it creating a new fair value gap lower off of that but as well a new order block sitting right there this order block is where we are now expecting lower prices from and this is where it gets interesting if you are more advanced in your understanding already this is where you now have a breaker the breaker is where you have a nested order block inside of it and a fair value gap that's extremely high probability after that we continue lower it takes a while before we actually create a new fair value gap lower but this right there is a new order block as well sitting right there sting into it and we continue lower off of that so let's track it back a little bit again reversal area manipulation gaps mitigated gaps as well we have a move into a previous premium array fair value gap lower it is in context and it is also the recent lag so let's go over one of the most important things right here because what do we actually mean with is it in context well if we follow along and we continue lower with these order blocks then eventually we will see this order block on the five minute time frame right there this technically speaking is an order block right it checks off the previous premium rate that we are coming into continuing lower off of that fair value gap being created so every step for it to actually be an order block is checked off it is actually an order block well that is if you ignore the most important step and that is context because you simply can't keep on following five minute order blocks on the five minute time frame going all the way down it doesn't work like that and this is why the relativity theory is so important because yes we have an order block sitting right there this order block is not an order block you want to trade off of it is not high probability at all neither is this order block for example right there it's also not a high probability order block why not simply said because on the one hour time frame we have an order block above those five minute order blocks sitting right there so this order block is the strongest order block again remember the higher the time frame the stronger the time frame so every pd rate that is formed on the higher time frame and of course the one hour is higher than the five minute time frame the pd rates on the one hour time frame are going to be stronger meaning they are going to be stronger magnets for price to attract towards they're also going to be stronger rockets from price to actually repulse from so the five minute will just simply be ignored it will almost be like it doesn't even exist those five minute or blocks right there the one hour order blocks right there they are the most important one and these one hour order blocks we can see on the four hour on the daily there is nothing above it meaning the only thing that was above it was this weekly order block right there and the weekly order block also had nothing above it in the form of the monthly right there so every single order block going from the weekly down into the daily right there daily we have nothing perfect because we already have a weekly order block going down into the four hour do we have something on the four hour no perfect going down into the one hour right there going down into the five minutes sitting right there as well then this becomes this order block one of the highest probability order block that you can ever look to trade simply said because there's no reason to come back above those order blocks because there's nothing on the time frame above it that it needs to retrace towards again before it actually continues lower all right so we understand where order blocks form and we understand in that combination as well 
which order blocks are the strongest. Now, moving on from section two to section three, it is, of course, just equally as important to see if an order block will actually hold. Now, how can we actually see if an order block will hold? There are different signs that are being told by price action on when an order block does not hold, even though in first instance, it might actually look high probability based on section one and section two, where the first step is again, FEG, again, fair value gap. It is in this case, not a fair value gap going for the ord block. Meaning if you have a bullish ord block, you have a bullish fair value gap, in the case that it's high probability, right? Well, if we then create a bearish fair value gap coming into the bullish ord block, that is not a great sign. That is a sign that the order block might actually fail. And again, we are talking about a fair value gap being created on the same time frame. Meaning, if it's a one hour order block and a one hour fair value gap coming into the order block as well, then that is not a great sign. Then the second one we have is disrespect. And this is where I'm going to need the chart to actually show you what this means. But for your notes, disrespect means when we are closing inside the order block, and not rejecting off of the order block, that indicates that the order block does not want to hold. That also indicates that since the order block is a fair value area, like the one we are seeing on the left right there, the two down candles we are seeing is the order block with a fair value gap coming off of previous discount array. Let's say it's in context, it's the most recent lag. Perfect, that's an order block we want to use, right? Well, then the first indication is that we are creating a bearish fair value gap which is just an expansion phase right there into the order block, already extremely suspicious. After that, what do we do? Well, like we mentioned, since this order block is a fair value area, if we are not offering fair value anymore and we are continuing lower right there, which indicates to us that we have already offered fair value, we are not offering fair value anymore. So if the market is doing one of two things, either offering fair value or seeking liquidity, then the Example on the left, we are clearly seeing that the low of the order block, the swing low, becomes the liquidity that price wants to target. So then we are not offering fair value anymore, we are seeking liquidity. Now there's one important thing that we need to go over before we dive into the chart. It's very important to understand what differentiates us from other traders. Our strategy and every single concept that we use right here goes hand in hand, meaning as well, that our order block does not have to hold in order for us to make money. How mind blowing is that? We don't need to be right. We can be absolutely wrong on the original ID and still manage to make money. So an order block holding for us is actually not that relevant because for us, it doesn't matter. We can still make money even if the order block does not hold. That's crazy. So with that being said, let's dive into the chart. All right, here we are on Australian dollar, US dollar, and we are on the monthly chart. On the monthly chart, we see this breakaway gap right there. It actually got traded into. Why did that breakaway gap get traded into? Because at first instance, we understood this is a breakaway gap. So we might actually not want to trade back into that breakaway gap before we deliver towards these highs right there, the draw on liquidity. Now, if we take a look at the weekly time frame. At first instance, right here, I'm going to remove the monthly fair value gap. At first instance, we understand we have this weekly fair value gap right there. Coming off of that, creating an order block off of that as well. Then right there, we mark out the order block right there. There's no fair value gap overlapping. So this becomes the order block. There is a fair value gap being, being created after the order block creation as well. Now, Seeing this, I would expect higher prices right here based on Australian dollar, US dollar alone, where if we come into that order block by just looking at this exact picture, I would say we are continuing higher, potentially off of the weekly value gap and potentially off of the order block as well. Now, what do we see? Once we come into that order block, we are creating a huge expansion phase going lower. All right not too crazy it's nothing to worry about just yet yes it is a little bit suspicious of course but ideally if we do want to continue higher already right here we have the first rejection right there meaning this down candle 
came into the ore block and rejected, at least tried to reject higher. The next candle has no other option to continue higher. The next candle, after that rejection candle right there, has no other option. As in, that needs to continue higher in order for us to actually still be bullish. Because it got two chances right there to actually continue higher. So if it wants to continue higher, of course, an ideal scenario is that we come back into this level. Why? Because that prevents a bearish fair value gap from being created. Where if we now close with this particular candle right here, this indicates to us that we now have a bearish fair value gap coming into a bullish ore block. We already had the rejection higher right there, which means that we are currently on our way to disrespect this order block right there. And when we are on our way to disrespect this order block, do we just sit, hope and pray that we can still catch a trade going higher, that we might on the one hour still see some nice bullish order block being created and we just try to buy on every single opportunity? No, at that moment in time, my bias switches around. I am no longer bullish anymore because I understand we have now offered fair value right there. And when we have already offered fair value and we tried to push higher and we failed to do so, we create a bearish fair value in the meantime as well. Then this low of that order block right there becomes liquidity, the liquidity we actually want to target, which coincidentally, but does not have to be that way, is currently overlapping as well. It's the exact low of that monthly breakaway gap right there which adds on to the idea of when we actually do want to trade back into the monthly breakaway gap because we expected higher prices or at least i expected higher prices off of that weekly order block in first instance but during the forecasts i mentioned this is not going higher and this is the first target right there on the next candle and eventually this liquidity right there is the next target that is our draw on liquidity so what do you do do you just wait and again like we mentioned you sit there and you just wait and hope for bullish prices no you know the draw on liquidity right there all you need right now is a narrative you need the context again and the context being well if we are going lower right there then where are we going lower from well at that moment in time clearly we are not having a sting into this weekly fever gap so if we go into the daily and into the four hour right there, we see we are already continuing lower without coming into this weekly value gap, without coming into this daily fair value gap as well. And before this daily fair value gap actually got created on the four hour time frame, we see we are already continuing lower towards the draw liquidity. Do we again just sit and wait and say, well, we still have a weekly fair value gap all the way right there. Well, we can first trade back into that right now to then continue lower. No, doesn't make a lot of sense, right? We are that close to the draw liquidity. So let's just try to capitalize on the last move. So right here, what do we see? Again, we do not have a daily fever gap higher just yet. So we have this four hour fever gap sitting right there, which is a reversal area. How do we know? If we are not coming back into that ore block and we are going to continue lower off of that value gap, all things we are going to go over in coming videos as well. This right here is a reversal area. If we go into the five minute time frame, then the five minute time frame right now gives us the context because on the four hour, we are coming from the premium array towards this draw on liquidity right there. There's our context, our narrative, our draw on liquidity is clear, bias is clear. If we are going lower, then where are we going lower from? That gives us the context. So after that, we come into that fair value gap, the four hour value gap, the first time right there, creating a first sharp turn does not hold. For us, doesn't matter. As in, of course, it would be nice if it already held, but we did not get involved right there. Why not? Remember the previous video where we went over what is the highest probability fair value gap? It's two fair value gaps not two fair value gaps in the same lag, but two fair value gaps is in you have one fair value gap continuing lower right there. That fair value gap gets a sting back into it, gets traded back into it. Then that creates a new fair value gap and a new lag lower. That is the highest probability 
And on the five minute, that is what you want to do for your four hour PD race. So once we retrace back into this five minutes for value gap, we also see what? We see an order block being created right there. That order block is where you can now look to trade off of. That is a very high probability or block. The only thing is, is that we do at that moment in time, if we want to be very advanced, very specific, we have a 15 minute fair value gap being created above it as well. Which means that if you were to enter off of that, just know it is better to enter like this and cover the 15 minute fair value gap as well. Because if you get that sting into the 15 minute fair value gap and your stop loss was right there, it's just a shame. Don't suffocate your stop loss. A one to two right there is easily reached within the overall context. And this ID was all based on an order block that didn't even hold. And again, that is the funny part where we need to think outside of the box. An order block, a fair value gap, does not need to hold, does not necessarily need to be created when we're talking about fair value gaps in order for us to actually make money, in order for us to capitalize on the IDs. The market always tells us exactly what it is doing. And if it's not doing what we first thought it would have done, then we can still capitalize on that ID. And that is the most important part to understand. Then from section three, we move on to section four, where I have a very important announcement to make. The MMT Spring Enrollment, which is the money-making team. Spring Enrollment, money-making team being the mentorship. From the 1st of March, we will have an enrollment. The enrollment will last a total of four months. So I'm looking for traders and students that are willing to dedicate four months only to see how far you can come and to eventually get to the profitable stage as well. Only serious people that want to dedicate at least a minimum of four months. If you are interested in that and you want more details on both the essentials and the masterclass, then please feel free to reach out to info at ario.io as well. So this is how you go about using order blocks. This is only order blocks. We still have other PD rays to go over as well. And how you use them in cooperation with fair value gaps, which is of course the most important thing. Understand this and your trading will become a lot easier as well. But again, this is only the beginning. We are not nearly done yet. And on that note, all right, perfect. Thank you.